Hi everyone, I feel a little bit guilty for having not addressed the fact that it is July and it is the World uh, Watercolor Month. So uh, basically, I thought today I will show you a few little things or doodles you can do which are super fun and I'm looking at these bunnies which I think a lot of you liked when I put them um, on Instagram and I thought I'll show you how to create these because it is watercolor but it is um, quite easy so I think whenever doodles come into mind it is something that um, is not only easy but you know that you will get there you don't need that uh, specific skill um, or anything like that so let's go ahead and start with it now you will notice a slight change to my background so today i'm trying out the new best ever craft mat i mean it's new to me i think it's been out probably for a while it's this gray color and it's um, rubberized so everything it doesn't slide so my hand actually sticks onto it um and yeah it's got like a grip to it basically it's not sticky in the sense of stickiness but it's got definitely a grip which is something that requires a lot of um, getting used to but things like um you know like brushes or whatever or pens they don't slide off easily i guess anyway um so what you need to do first of all is basically it's an exercise that you do uh, for the entire page and that's what makes it fun because you then alternate the little doodles for each of the character and also the the colors of the watercolors and and that's uh, the fun element of it but first of all i'm just going to give myself a very rough illustration and i'm going to make them larger for my pencil i'm going to use the uh, graph gear 1000 it's by pentel and it's the 0 0.5 lead and i really enjoy this pencil ever since i got it i have been using pencil more often um, than i did before so to begin with i'm just really simply drawing out three circles making sure that they will fit in and it's okay if they're not ident identical the point is that we're just giving ourselves an idea of what we're trying to do here. I'm not pressing onto the pencil at all. I'm just creating these shapes. Now, when you're doing that, think of these bunnies as characters. So um, you wouldn't really have the same character or the same um, look to every character actually I will do six I'm just seeing that it won't have um, I won't have enough space otherwise so there is the other three here at the bottom so as I was trying to say the um, every character has their own personality and their own uh, feelings uh, emotions so think that way when you're going to draw faces when you're going to draw details accessories um, you know think of it uh, as individuals and although you're doing them in the same style but just you know alternate it slightly make it slightly different and then you'll see it it will be a lot of fun so this is very basic and for now what i'm gonna do i'm just going to set them right next to you i'm going to pull out a watercolor palette and just really um have fun with this so I'm going to grab my one of my favorite new brushes, which is the Raven brush. It's a 3-0 by Jackson's. It is um, a synthetic version of a squirrel mop brush. And so it is extremely soft. It takes in a, a lot of water, but um, it's not as soft as a real squirrel so it just has a little bit of a shape to it but i love uh, working with it so as you can see the the fun part um here is the fact that i mix them uh, in interesting colors so that's the same thing i'm going to do here i'm going to go into um like an orangey kind of color and 
um, I'll start with an orange side here and don't worry if you go slightly outside of the lines it actually adds a little bit of character as you'll see later so the key here is to work with the watercolor as it is still wet so you don't want things to start drying up and the wetter the better the watercolor will move I go into the already dried watercolor you can see I'm starting to glaze which is also another effect that you can leave or you can soften it out whichever you want I like it softened out I'm also going to pull out my baby muslin cloth which comes in so super handy I think I will sw uh, swap to a clean side because this one is now a little bit done so I'm going to use it to take excess water out of my brush so that I have a little bit more control when I need to. So in this one I'm going to just wet the bunny on one side and you will see in a minute why. So I'm also wetting him on the other side a little. And I'm going to go into this color, grayish or paints gray. It's like a grayish, dark or bluey gray kind of color. I like it a lot. So you'll see this color will create blooms because of the wet background. Now keep in mind you don't want it to be too dark because you do need to doodle the face in. So now I'm going to add a little bit of pink into this. And that's an interesting combo. Especially where the pink will collide with the grey and mix in a little. It'll just look so pretty. So that's for this one. Next one, I definitely want them all to have some sort of a... Um, how shall I say? Um, Payne's grey going. So I like this color. I'm holding my brush quite far off now. And the reason is I want a little bit of mess here. I want wonky lines. And the closer I hold, the more control I have. So if I want that style, I'll just hold it further away. And now I'm going to go into Payne's Grey again and just dab it in in places. And also Mars Black. Now Mars Black is an interesting one. It has a great uh, granulation property. So wherever you add it, it will look really interesting. So I'm just giving him these little spots like that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. At the minute, you might think it's not really looking that impressive. However, you should wait and see because it actually is a really fun little exercise, which, like I said, doesn't take much skill, but it is super, super satisfying. So we're going to do the same here. And so when I want it a bit lighter, I'm just using more water 
and whatever you're going to connect it that's when the color is going to flow in there so going to go into paints gray add it into one ear add it a little here paints gray and pinks they're just such a beautiful combo now if it's too pink for you just add a little bit more of the paints grain areas to break it down a little and what color do I want now hmm I really like this green color it's super it's sort of like a very vibrant very glowy almost color and it looks just so delicious it's like a yellowy green and it is by Magello and I can't think of it right now what it's called I'll put it down below here somewhere and again paints gray I mean what color doesn't look great great combined with paints gray I don't know personally again work with it as much as you want the darkness to be there okay so that looks quite nice if you have done a mistake what you can do is you wet your brush and then just move the color use a tissue or a finger just to to dab it off like that and finally okay I feel like this lavender color here might do super nice next to this green now you could make them as small or as big and depending obviously what size of journal you prefer to work I always like the small journals um, I think I might want to try working in a larger one at some point I used to I used to actually work in A3s back in college days but I now find that working in a smaller um, is the right format for me especially when I'm illustrating or drawing everything on a smaller scale looks cuter to me I don't know why <clears throat> I feel that if I try to scale up what will, what feels natural to me in terms of uh, illustration, it just starts to look odd. I don't get the proportions right, and so try doing the same. I think I, I said this before uh, as a tip. If you struggle with something, try scaling it down, see if that helps. Okay, so I quite like this. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to dry it with a heat tool and come back for doodling. Now, I wanted to show you something I'm doing behind the scenes while I'm drying. So, as I'm drying and I am getting to a state where it's sort of, it's not puddled up anymore, but I can still see the gloss. What I do is I take a scrunched up tissue, make sure there is a scrunch up so it's not flat. And then kind of go into the watercolor and that creates this crinkly kind of um, paper kind of texture and that looks to me really nice so if I want that bit of extra texture uh, I can do that in places like this so hopefully you can see it just lifts the pigment so be aware if you want a concentration of that pigment in that area it will obviously lift it but I like the marbled kind of effect of it so that's what I'm doing. So if you do it on a puddle, you won't get that effect. Okay, so I have removed that um, mat. And the reason is I like when I draw or doodle, I like to move around my uh, sketchbook, right? So that one has a grip and the sketchbook kind of sticks to it. So it's a little bit awkward. So anyways, I have done that now. In areas where um, you now can see the pencil outlines, you can just basically um, go ahead and delete, or not delete, erase them rather. 
Someone spent too much time behind the computer. Right, so... Just like that. Make sure you don't go too much into the watercolour because some watercolours actually can be erased as well and looks a little bit... Uh, just not as good as before. So, just where it goes outside of the line. Especially on the lighter colours, it's more visible, I suppose. When it's a dark colour, you can hardly see anything there. Uh, but keep in mind that you won't see these lines as much anyway. You will use a black pan for doodling, so that will decrease the visibility of those things. So, one thing I would recommend is using a brush rather than your fingers, because sometimes you can smudge things. Or... Right. So, now we're going to take a pen. The pen that I'm picking today is a Muji 0.25 which is great because it's got such a fine point. It's you will see how great it is for doodling. So where I start is usually this side of the face and then just outline the body. The wonkier the line is I find actually works better. So it doesn't have to be outlined perfectly. Sometimes you can go over, sometimes you can create little gaps. Then you go between the ears and finish with the ear. So I'm going to do the same thing for all of the bunnies now and then we're going to come back for the fun part of the doodling. Okay, so now we're going to um, do the ears. So you could start with the bunny and kind of do everything on one bunny if you want to. But I find when the... Um, whatever I'm doing is repet repetitive, like repeating, I'd rather do that in one go. So here, again, remember what I said before? I'm going to alternate things and sometimes give them a bigger, wider kind of ear or sometimes very skinny um, just to to have a little bit of interest, not, not to be exactly the same on every single ear. Sometimes they curl a little bit more, I can exaggerate the shape, sometimes uh, they're thinner, thicker, etc. Okay, so that's done. Now, the face that you can think of could be anything, really. And um, I'm going to go for these dotted eyes. Quite small. <laughs> I do like the look. And quite far away. So I'm starting around the half of the face, which is, if you draw a line, you would know where the half of the face is. And they're quite uh, widespread. I find that for illustration, this looks particularly cute. In reality, it looks a little bit odd, but quite cute in illustration. So you can see I'm going really quite far. So now we're going to do the nose. And the nose, again, whichever you want, I'm going to do just a, an oval today. And just slightly lower than between the eyes, so not quite between the eyes, just a little bit lower. I'd say in between where the eyes and the mouth will go. Now you can keep them empty or you can doodle in and make it black as well. I haven't decided which one I want just for now, but here is the thing I want to start adding emotions or feelings, and I'm going to do that by adding um, brows. So, brows do create or help to create uh, the 
you know, the feeling or the expression of a feeling. So that's what I'm doing. Some of them will look, um, you know, a bit more kind of relaxed or sometimes questioning things, wondering, sometimes a bit sad. So that's it. Now for the mouth. Um, I think for the mouth again, sometimes I'll give it a little bit more of a smile. Sometimes it won't be a smile. Sometimes it'll be a sad <laughs> line, but it's all very much just quite simple. You know, just look at what you have already on your eyes and kind of go with that. That will help you to decide what what feeling to give them. Right, so that's it for now. Now I'm going to look at the um, at doodling their outfits. So I like to today to give them a chalker. So that I'm going to do by quite a thin one, not big. I'm going to go repeat that on all of them. I haven't done that in the other illustration. In the other illustration I've done different kind of looks as you can see here um, but today I feel like they all will wear a chalker and we'll take it from there and change it up okay so that's as simple as that might need to thicken this one up a little okay so next thing we're going to decide what kind of outfit are they wearing so I feel like I want to start with this one actually I'm going to give him a v-neck and I'm going to draw a line down and put some buttons on here. So he's kind of wearing like a cardigan. I feel that just having one line rather than th thickness play um, is better in this case. Now here I'm going to do my favorite doodle which is just line work. You start with a straightish line in the middle and then just following it like that curled. I just love this doodle. I could do this on anything like flowers and it just feels so relaxing. Great stress buster. Right, and then fill in whatever seems a little bit too empty. So that's that one. Now let's do is kind of zigzaggy shapes they are fun too and maybe I'll repeat this one just for extra fun That's it. Actually, I'll repeat this line as well. Why not? That's it. Okay. Right. So next thing, let's try the geometric shapes. And this one is going to be just a triangle that I am connecting all the way down in the middle of his outfit. And I think um, I'll put like a dot in the middle of everyone, every triangle. That's it. Nice and simple, that one. Stripes. Now, I do want stripes. I'll probably do the stripes here. Let's do the bow. I want to include a bow. So the bow, you just draw two like teardrops like this. And then you go in and create a smaller teardrop inside and you color in the line. Like that, that's your bow. You could just add these um, ribbons to hang down like that. 
Okay, and then stripes. Now stripes, I love stripes, so we have to do stripes, of course. Try to alternate them, make some of them thicker, some of them thinner, as in closer apart and, and wider apart. And that also looks quite nice. I had a little delivery, so I had to run downstairs. Okay, so um, as I was saying, that is pretty much it. What you can do if you wanted to is just continue doodling to your satisfaction. If you find that you want to add more detail or, you know, um, for example, in these ears, I think what may look good if I start doodling in you know those stripy black and white doodles so that may look quite nice maybe not all of them maybe some of them but it definitely will give you more detail and more doodle time if you felt that that was very quick and you wanted to continue adding so you can do something like that something like that I find that if you had a particularly stressful day or something like that and you wanted to get your mind off things um, doing this particular doodle because you'll do a lot of it I find that it's uh, it's a really good way of killing your stress or you know switching your mind to something else maybe also change them up and then I'll come back to you and show you the final here they are all finished so you can see I doodled different shapes in the ears and that really gives them a different look and kind of looks cute so let's have a look at this one it's got stripes this one I went for a bit of a zebra this one has like um, elongated type of a polka dot like a oval 
dot and then these are just little shapes like that these are thinner stripes and these are tiny polka dots which i think are really rather cute so here are the faces and their outfits if you really wanted to you could create like little arms and legs but again that's um, an option for you i kind of like them like that without anything so that is it for today i hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching see you soon